This is Brady Kachuk, and you're listening to Missing Curfew. Fella, my man. Fella Fridays continue here. Nice hat. Uh, Paired with a nice t-shirt. Thank you, pal. I always think about boy Broadway, Jimmy Scoops Hayes, when I'm betting on these games and watching these games. And um, Man, he, he he embraced the cold streak, Hayes. He would embrace the cold Totally. Streak. Parlay <laughs> Cafe, the door's always open. Yeah, he's a beauty. So, uh, I'm done. Let's get right into it here. We got a great guest coming at you here. Uh, Brady Kachuk, which is... Um, you know, I guess it's, I wouldn't say perfect timing, but why don't we just start right there before we get into Pierre Dorian, let go by the Ottawa Senators. Um, we were talking before we got going here on air that, I mean, just a list of mistakes that he kind of made, right? That, you know, listen, I, I, I'm a big fan of DJ Smith and, um, you know how I feel about Brady Kachuk, Bathersons. I've got to know that kid a little bit over social media. He's a fucking beauty. Um, it's time is now for this team to kind of take that next step. And, and and right now I think they're sitting around 500 with everything that went down with, with Shane Pinto. And, you know, obviously we're thinking about him and dealing with all that. I mean, you can only run out of so many lives, right? Ups? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, uh, the new, you know, with the new ownership, I think they came into a situation that was just super unfortunate. Right. It's terrible news within the first couple of weeks. Um, you know, you got the Pinto deal, uh, that seems unfortunate in so many ways. And then the Dadnoff losing a first round pick in the next uh, one of the next three years. That's I mean, huge, that, that's just like, you know, shitty. Yeah. So what? what so what do you do? You the guys like you know we're calling a we're calling the immediate press conference and we're gonna we're gonna shake things up and um, you know having our guest on today, I think we we dive into just the excitement around their team and their young players, um, their additions. You know, the re- resurgence of Claude Giroux, him playing the way he is. Yeah. Um, you know, Stutzel, they, they, they got a great team. So, um, seems like Stevie Steos will serve as the interim. Steady the, Stevie. The interim general manager. Um, and he, you know, good guy. Let's just take the er- hey. interim title off of there right now, eh? <laughs> hey, hey, if, if anyone's listening from Ottawa, I take that interim title off and just give it to Steady Stevie Steos. Ste- listen. Good style when he played, right? No visor, just good, steady. Always had a tan. Yeah. Just playing in it. Good hair, always let no bucket. I would take that interim title off right now and just get it to steady. Yeah, you play hard for that guy. I like steady Stevie. I don't even really know him. I just know him through like loops and uh, you being a Western Canadian guy. Um, But in all seriousness, I'll be, it's a great point by you about the new management. You're already kind of, if you're a GM, I went through with Jay Feaster when, you know, they brought Berkey in as president. It wasn't new ownership, but they brought Berkey in as a president. You know, I had a meeting with Jay and he kind of knew right then that the writing was on the wall. So maybe Pierre, you know, already knew that his, he was on a short leash and for this to happen. But for me with Ottawa, they're sitting right now eight games in at four, four, four and four ups. Consistency to me is what they still got to figure out. Like I've watched them play earlier in the year where they're at home. And I'm like, wow, this team's buzzing. This team's ready to go. And then I've watched them play the last couple of games. Now, great. I didn't watch the whole 60 minutes, but I watched times of it. To me, if they can get that consistent factor going, but. I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know Pierre Dorian myself, but I don't think it's a bad thing for for Steady Stevie to come in here, kind of a new guy right now, start yeah. fresh. Lots of hockey left, right, Uppy? I agree. And then just one more thing. I think what falls into this too is is the the play of Alex Dabrinkit this year. Like he's he's one of the, arguably the NHL's best players the first month and a half of the season. They weren't able to keep him. He almost wanted out, and that can't be the that can't be the way of you know, way the world in Ottawa. You got to have these guys want to stay. You guys, you want to be part of this team. What's wrong now? You know, now there's going to be a new face to the to the organization. A guy making new decisions, and I, like you just said, I don't think it's a bad. Thing. Yeah, and you know what? Speaking of our guest today, Brady Kachuk, I love him in so many different ways. When they played the Red Wings a week ago or a couple weeks ago, he went right at the brink. I bet you don't want to be here, and that's how it's supposed to be. Take it personal. Yeah. Like if a guy doesn't want to play on my team, and especially if you're the captain, like Brady. Go right at him. Make life miserable on him. And Debrinket is lighting it up. I don't love the way Debrinket handled himself with the Ottawa situation. However, I was never in that position as a player to maybe dictate where I could go. If I was, maybe I would have a different feeling about it. But listen, I, I think there's better days ahead for the Ottawa Senators. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I just hope they get it going because I think DJ Smith is a good coach here. So, uh, World Series. Shout out to our boy Billy Quinn was there last night. The Texas Rangers, eleven and zero on the road. Crazy man. Talk about uh, wow. I mean, and lost the last game at home, Max, to lose the division to, to Houston? Yeah, the last game of the regular season, they lost to the Astros, and that was to 
That was, yeah, so they wouldn't have... And they were we were leading the division for, like, almost the whole year. Wow, they wouldn't have had the schedule they did, huh? And what an uphill battle. Yeah, so uh, Austin Hedges was a backup catcher who's a... Uh, uh, Love him. Clive they still work, used to work, with, work out with him here in Newport. And I guess, like, like he was really, like, the, like the glue of that team. Like, the, the manager, Bruce Bochy, the coach staff, like, hey, get in there, get in the clubhouse there, get the boys going, draw them up, we need you, like... So he deserves the ring as much as anyone. He didn't... He didn't, he didn't he didn't get one ball, but that stuff. Did he? Did he no, did he fizzled no, one he's, pitch. No. He's a catcher. No, he's a good hitter. Good hitter. He didn't get pinch hit. Or no, he's, he's in there to be the glue of the locker room. Looking right, but edgy. Good hitter. He's actually. Uh, Joe DeMarco told me that statistically, he's the worst hitter in the major league. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I go. I go. They have. They, they come out with those stats. He's like, yeah, and statistically, he's. Yeah, the worst I always hitter. say he's a good hitter. No, he's a great, great catcher. Good catcher. Calls a great game. Oh, nice. But hey, he was so happy. He was the first guy over that railing, running there. I'm sure he was the drunkest guy on that plane back to uh, Dallas last night. But uh, the Rangers, man, like I said, I set up three months ago now, two and a half months ago, they came in, gave it to the Jays. I was like, this team's legit. And they made me some money. So thank you to them. I rode them. For you. I rode them hard. Yeah. Uh, but congrats to Billy Quinn, City of Dallas. That's going to be a good shaker going on there. Yeah, he, I think Billy went to three, four, and five. Right, went to every game. What a, what a guy! Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't yes. you were him? I know. I see. He's out there just doing the chants and everything. Too. Oh yeah, real sports fan. I mean, he used to own a bit, bit of the team. Yeah, I don't know if he still does. I don't think so. No, he doesn't. No, well, but I mean, what's your son golf? Now? Yeah, he can't be owning the ML. He's focused on living. I'm going living. November seventeenth. I'm going to see Bill Burr with my boy Billy Quinn. I love Bill Burr. And then we're going to the UFC Apex fights. Unreal. Isn't that F1 weekend team? That is F1 weekend. We're, we're on the fence. The Apex fights too? Yeah. Oh we're on the fence with F1. You, you know what F1's expensive when, when BQ's like, uh, it's pretty pricey, boys. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need to go to, I don't need to go to race, Billy. So uh, congrats to Texas Rangers. I just want to touch real quick, uh, Halloween costumes. First of all, what, what was yours? Oh, I was uh, Wade Ripple. I was Wade Ripple from the show, the Pixar film. Uh, is that a kid? Elemental. Show? Is that what great you- movie, buddy? By the way, I, I haven't seen like a Pixar flick since like Toy Story. You know, what, what, am, what am I going to watch those for? But now that I got kids. Yeah, you know, I took Izzy to uh, her first movie on her birthday back in August, and uh, I can't lie, I had a little tear in my eye. It was a you know good flick, good little love story. But anyways, it's the elements. I was Wade Ripple, who's a water guy. He's the water inspector, and then Izzy was um, her name is Ember, like a like a fire ember. Yeah, I saw the and they hair on her. And then Christina was this girl who's like uh, she she's kind of the boss. She's the crazy girl. She's the cloud. And then little Beck was this kid who's like has a crush on Ember, but he has a little flower. He's little. He's like the earth. Yeah. Um. Great family photos. You have lots of trick or treaters up there. What, what, what yeah, you- we did. Uh, There's a huge. I mean, this block party outside Burke and Elaine. Shout out to Burke. He's you know big hockey guy. Right behind our house, there's a massive street with with. I don't know. There's probably 200 people out there. DJ, food, beers, photo tents, fucking, uh, um, you had the blow up bounce machine yeah. that he loves. Yeah. Uh, it's nuts. People go all out. Sounds, I mean, it's no, it's no Halloween party at the Playboy. Man. A couple of Sounds pretty good. good. Right? Yeah. Let me tell you, I'll, uh, the girls that aren't, you know, getting ready for Saturday night at the Casamigos party. Well, there's a few walking around the streets of uh, Dover Shores. I'll tell you what, the, when, when when Halloween falls on a Tuesday like that, like you bring up Casamigos in LA, like the, these girls up there, like they need like seven costumes. Like by last night, some of these girls that were posting on Instagram, I'm like, enough. Yeah. But at the same time, good dedication to the holiday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's five, five costumes they needed. Like that's impressive. But at the same time, it's like, take a night off. I remember when I went to New York. Hey. To- Rest of it. When I went to New York with the Blues, we had four days there. I brought three costumes. Yeah. In NYC. Yeah, no, I did that, three different parties. That's what's again a good schedule. Yeah, for we had a rookie dog. party, and then uh, yeah, I pulled out the astronaut costume and I pulled out the ninja costume. I was full on. What was more fun, those three days in New York, or last or Tuesday night at? Uh... Ah, it's nice to see the kids. <laughs> hey, kids running around. You could be honest on the podcast stuff. You don't have to say that. You don't have to. You know, you can tell me the truth. I'll be honest. Science is real. <laughs> um. Yeah, but anyways, your family looked beautiful, buddy. Uh, speaking of uh, costume, it wasn't a costume, but Pat McAfee had the, you know, the the cut off Pittsburgh Penguins. Does he have a number on the back of that? Uh, oh, there was something on the back of that. I don't, I don't think it said McAfee, but it said something. But he made what kind of arm programs, guy, on? every day. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't well, get some weights in here. I wouldn't mind beefing up. I shall, well, yeah, we got alumni game coming up, which we're going to touch on. But uh, listen, Pat McAfee's great for the NHL. He yep. loves hockey. Um, He's promoting the game greatly, and he had Gary Bettman on, 
uh, yesterday. And, and listen, a lot of stuff Gary said is true. You know, like uh, the attendance is up at a league record right now at this point in the season. Going to break the the old the old record. Uh, we got good young players. The game's fast. All, all that stuff. But the one thing Gary keeps saying about competitive balance in the league, which he's not wrong, but to me it's like, yeah, we have competitive balance. But we have a hard cap to where every GM in the league is completely handcuffed. Yeah. Like, you can't make a trade. Like, you say what you want about James Harden in the NBA. I, I don't like the way he handled himself through with the Philadelphia 76ers or with the Houston Rockets or whatever. But they can make like, they can make blockbuster trades. In the NHL, because of this hard cap and where we are, these GM's hands are tied. So, yes, it's a bit of a balance. But for me, I'd rather these big boy teams up be able to make trades and just free them up a little bit, which we talked about a luxury tax rate missing curfew for the last couple of years. It's never going to happen under Gary Bettman. We'll see with the new commissioner. But yeah, we got competitive balance, but we can't make a trade ups. You cannot make a trade. And at the deadline, but Patty Kane last year, you need three other teams to come in there. So I do agree the league's in great shape, but I do think this hard cap up is something the new commissioner should look at. Whenever Parity. It Whenever. Parity. It should be kept for books. Yeah. It shouldn't be kept for, for the league. I think the league has... Plenty of stars that need to be showcased on on big platforms and big levels, and that alone should bring them and attract them to the big cities. But how do you get these guys? How do you move these guys around? Like you're saying, how, how do we get the best of the best playing together in a big city where hockey can be put more on a platform yeah. and we can compete with? Because this MLS, they're coming if they haven't already passed us, you know. And they got they're, they're loading up on teams. Right? You don't think yeah. Miami's been able to put together like powerhouse team now, just whatever? Yeah. There's gotta be a, there's gotta be an answer. Right now they're happy that the NHL is, you know, it's for everyone where the you know, anyone can win at any point. Um, but you you watch MLB, you probably touched on this, but you know, Texas and Arizona, both in the World Series, like, that's not the Yankees, that's not the right it can happen. It can happen. What are we talking about? It could totally happen. And Gary also said they're about to break the record for comeback wins. Which he's right about that. A two goal, two goal lead is no longer safe in the NHL. And I would, Gary said, this is the greatest thing ever. I would say, Gary, from a better's perspective, I, I don't know why. It just always feels like I'm on the other side of a two. Like when my team's up two nothing, I'm like, here we go. Next thing you know, two little ticky tack calls, two two, three two, four two, empty netter, game over. It's because I don't. Plays know. Deep. I don't. Know. It's like, come on. But do you do you love the fact that no lead is safe as a, as a fan? I guess now, or or would you rather? Uh, I like that. Down? You know, I think in in uh, it's kind of what's great about some of the different sports we have, right? Baseball, you know, a, a hit and rally late in the game can completely change it, uh, where it's not so boring. Like in soccer, you're up two; it's almost impossible to tie it, which sucks. Football, you know, last second touchdown and then onside kick. There's a chance to come back in games. Hockey is you used to be able to lock it up, right? You lock it up. If, no, you lock it up. <laughs> if you lost a two goal lead in the last couple minutes, you were getting crucified by your coach. You wouldn't the play. Next practice, you're done. Wouldn't play. I mean, I, I wouldn't play the next game for sure. Me either. I'd It'd be, be all my fault. Hitch should blame it on me somehow. I'd be getting bag skated the next morning at 9 30 in I Minnesota know. in an empty rink when win or lose, eh? Hey, like your shirt. Hit the booth. Yeah, let's go. Um No, I don't I think hockey, I think it's great for that if you're on the right side of it. Yeah, yeah. it's great. I, but I wouldn't brag about it. No, I would just like, I would like to see some more trades. I would like to see some more blockbuster trades. Yeah, put it this way. Okay, we got a lot of comeback wins more than any other sport. But our star player is playing in Edmonton. Yeah, for how long? For, and, sure. and so, you know, our star player you can't get on TV on the East Coast to these people that stay up. You know, what are you going to wait till no. 1030 to putt us up? I I, I I was on the East Coast for a good stretch. Like I said, it's tough to stay up for the games out here. It's tough. It's, even if you have money on it, I'm like trying to stay awake. I'm like, I got to watch this game. It's and hard. Like, I, I want Canada to have great players, but I think our best players at some point need to be able to play on the biggest teams. Yeah, I agree. And, and the cap is going to go up next year, $5 million, then maybe $10 million next year. So we'll see what that, that gives some. But these guys are going to spend right to the cap again, and they're going to be in the same situation. So I guess it's a little bit on the GMs as well because they're going to spend the cap and then I, I don't know. I don't That's know. I've thought out of these. I, I hate this competitive balance. Like we got the most competitive balance. Like I, I don't know. It, it, I I respect everything else that Gary said, but I had a hard time with that. And like I'm going to say, we need a luxury tax to can get rid of the luxury hard tax and to donate half to charity. Give the rest of the players. How's that? Ex players? Yeah. Alumni? Right. Give it to the alumni. Come on, come on, baby. Uh, up dog Pittsburgh Penguins. Obviously, with this tragedy with uh, Adam Johnson, they made it mandatory for the AHL and East East Coasted guys to wear a neck guard. Uh, I heard Gretz's comments last night on TNT about, listen, a young kid that puts a neck guard on, if he never takes one off, 
he'll never know the difference. So that's something to think about. I think Gretz is onto something there. If you leave him on through junior, they'll never know the difference. Um, I hated them. I hated them. Yeah. I hate them. I, I can't remember the last time I wore one. It was yeah. probably what in Pee Wee. Yeah. Right? Where you're probably 12 or 13. Until you, you probably wore one until you played the. And a lot of guys just. For the oil bear. Um, I, I, never, I never wore one to, with the oil bear. I said until you played the oil bear. That's oh, probably when you took yeah, it off. I was 16, but. Yeah. A lot of guys, even too, back then, Obi, you had to do like the, say, minimum three centimeter one, right? Guys would tape it up, get it really yeah. small. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like, it, it was. You know, you're sweating and it's like, all of a sudden you're like in the cold rinks and it's like giving you a neck rash. Yeah. Like it was, it, it's disgusting. Now, I'll think, be, of, think of it's a sweatband around yeah. your neck. It's just, it wasn't perfect. Now, this is something, maybe a question for Frosty or a trainer, but like, is there anything you could wear like a, a neck sleeve that's really thin, but Kevlar, like a, a neck sleeve that's part of like, almost part of your gitch, right? Because the neck guards you put around here, they, they get in your way, you can't, but what if you had a, a like Thomas Placanic used to wear? Thomas Cooper used to wear a turtleneck from fucking Fruit of the Looms. That was just this big, but like, <laughs> play it? no. But I used to chirp a nice neck guard play. Like, okay, I that know. was not. See, that was just. Now you're not going to be able to chirp. Obviously, you wouldn't actually chirp. I don't think his was protective. Really? You think he, he thought just, it looked good, didn't it? Like, like under a suit, like I wore at the Vegas yeah. uh, All Star game. He had the little Montreal Canadian symbol. I don't think it was. It was the. It was just, part, just that was his look. Part of his underwear, I think. Huh. I don't think he was wearing that. We, we could find out, but I don't think he was wearing that. So the check. Quebec Major Junior League makes it mandatory, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is that is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's always been like that. For okay. the- so, I mean, listen, it was a tragedy. We we spoke on it. It was 100%. something that could, could have been avoided, I think, uh, but a tragedy nonetheless. And, and um, if we want to prevent this from happening, you know, again, there needs to be education around it, and then there needs to be some sort of solution and you know may, maybe there is I, I it's funny but tj oshi and I, it pops up on my instagram a lot he's had this company called do you know what his company's called but it always pops up on my phone and he has this skate resistant um shirts yeah skate resistant socks skate resistant and, and i don't know if it ever, it's gone up to the neck but he's been promoting it for over a year because it's been popping up and he does his own ads and i think it's great i think all kids should wear protective wrist guards yeah. and uh, i wore protective wrists on my and, socks as your achilles yeah that's an open spot that guys numerously get cut like and that's losing a life really makes you look at things in, in a different lens yeah it's, it's i mean it's it's obviously like you said a tragedy and, and eric carlson today for the pittsburgh penguins was wearing something that that looked like a Maybe one of those Kevlar neck. It was from here to here, so maybe that's what he's trying out. But listen, I I played with Jordan Smith when Smitty lost his eye, ended his career, and it obviously it's it's not compared to someone losing their life. You know, it's it's bad, but not as bad as that, obviously. But I remember, you know, I remember I put a visor on for a couple of days in practice. I remember that's when Loops went to a visor, Chris Kunitz went to a visor, um, numerous guys on our team in Portland went to visors because you know they realized, wow, this could happen to us. I tried it, I didn't like it. Um, so I think guys are going to try it because it, it was a freak accident, but God forbid it ever happens again. I, I just think it's hard to make it mandatory right now. And these guys really have to wear one. Like it's, it's, there's a better process than that. I, I did like Wayne's, uh, you know, we could touch on this too, but at the end of his, um, at the end of his piece, he spoke about different leagues around the world, um, not being the NHL and that they should look at maybe like end hitting, taking hitting away from it just because yeah. guys aren't as, Guys aren't as good over there. They yeah. don't know how to, you know, how to hit, and it's a little bit reckless sometimes. And and the NHL is the best in the world, and it's it's exciting. And hitting is a huge part of it. Fighting is a huge part of it. Adult that want that to ever change. Over there, it seems like, you know, our our, our guys do they know sometimes like hitting from behind is in a you know the I, I don't know they're just. I mean, it's that like going to a men's league game and letting these guys run around sometimes. Yeah, right? the, the English league that he was playing in that is by far the toughest league, league over there. Um, Dick Ernst, so went over there to fight. They, no, like, I they, I, they offered me a contract, and I'm like, listen, I, I didn't like fighting in the NHL when I was making millions. I'm not coming over there to chuck them. I'm yeah. done. Um, now, however, yeah, Sweden, Finland, uh, Swiss league, KHL, Austria, Germany. These are legit think, leagues. These are yeah. legit leagues that guys are over there making a living that have played there forever. So to say, hey, you, you, I mean, you can't body check. I, 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 they're not that physical leagues to begin with. Yeah, I know. So maybe just take it out. You think not hitting would have? Uh, I, I don't. Know. Like the fucking. I mean, 
I was hitting over there, but no one else really was. Yeah, you're not going to get me to say take hitting out of any hockey. Yeah. But that, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I mean, I, I don't know. But uh, anyways, I'll be just something I want to talk to you on. I wanted to talk to you about, get your opinion on it. It's, it's obviously a terrible situation, but when you see a guy like Eric Carlson out there in practice trying out something to protect his neck, uh, it's obviously a big thing. So uh, we'll be right back at Missing Curfew. Welcome back to Missing Curfew. Up dog. Bella. We usually say get this guy a blue light. But in this case, we're saying get this guy a whiskey, get him a Crown Royal. Ooh, Our tasty. boy, Ryan, the fact daddy O'Reilly, a thousand games in the National League. Um, listen, the boys in, in Nashville came out, no bucket for him. He went out first. His hair was flowing. He did a little clapper, got the feet going. Um, couldn't be happier for him, man. I did a little video uh, yesterday morning. Uh, like I said, when I met Ryan O'Reilly for the first time, I, I didn't know anything about him. Right, I came down. He had this sick flat brim hat on. He was coming down from the gym, obviously, with a little sick Colorado Avalanche thing. The music was being played. It was country. I'm like, this is terrible. I'm like, boys, I'm gonna throw some tunes on. I pump in my morning jacket. I look over the fact that he bump 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 <laughs> bump 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 bump. Um, got to know him. I knew he's a special person and a special player. So, fact that he congrats. I know it means a lot to you, but his hair looked just mint. Yeah, he's always had good. Oh. Hey. Uh, it was nice. You went through a couple of your old photos. I went through a couple of mine. Um, thanks to you, I met him via uh, Yo Music Festival right off the hop. Best way. The guy showed up with uh, the little low so uh, <laughs> no show socks with the tight fucking jean shorts. I go. This a ripped tee, and I'm like, God, if this guy's gonna wear this at Bonnaroo, make this look like like it's impressive. Well, how many pairs of underwear you got, Fact Daddy? Wow. Yeah. Cause he got he got a little chafy after the first night. Yeah, I've had uh, jean shorts were on his quads were just rubbing. Yeah, he brought me over. Yeah, you know, I think I might have played in my sixth or maybe my sixth or seven hundredth game. And Buffalo came to St. Louis, and he brought over a nice Forgot bottle of it. Green Label. Brought brought me a bottle of Green Label in my house before we went to dinner. It was classy, class yeah. act. God knows. Yeah. And then uh, you know him going and doing what he did in St. Louis, and me, me looking at that from the outside in, um, what he meant to that city, what he meant to that team. How many games do you think he played without having a pint or a, <laughs> a glass of wine or Not something right before the game? Not a lot. Guys I mean, are pro. Maybe, Guys are although, pro. He lived with Darcy Tucker when he was a rookie, so I'm sure him and Tucks had a few when he was living there. Uh, he just He's a gamer. Shows up. Last guy, yeah, as you know this, first guy at the rink, last guy to leave. Uh, first guy to go to if, if something's going on in the team. Um, great with the coaches, great with the trainers. This is absolute stud yeah I, my thing was about fact that he last guy off the ice last guy to leave the bar <laughs> that, that was him he, i remember coming out in denver and you know we have a good year that year and i go out there stop around get it get it done on my whole like christ and I'm, I, I have lunch plans with factor and he's still out there flipping pucks shooting and i'm banging i'm like yo fact daddy let's go he's like ah. i'm like da i'll see you for dinner i'm out here like he just he loved the game and then it rubbed off on me halfway through that year, right? You know, we started to struggle a little bit, and, you know, Sacco was like, hey, you're conditioning. I go, okay, yeah. I'm just going to start doing, in fact, that he's in the gym, I'm going to go up there. Now, maybe I wasn't there every single day, but I was trying to do the extra stuff. So he motivated me as a young kid that the fact that he's up there, I'm going to do it. So uh, congrats to Fact Daddy. Thousand more, fella. Keep going. I'll see you in Nashville next Keep week. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Um, up dog, you got your Jack Hughes jersey right there. Uh, we all know that he's your boy. You've been, you've been calling it since you know, two or three years ago, but how good he's going to be. Well, I'm going to give some love. Get this guy a beer. Quinn Hughes. This guy is nasty. Nasty. Talks names him captain right away. If Rick Talkin thinks you're a captain, you got to be a good guy. The way this kid is playing right now, he's a human breakout. He doesn't even need oh, 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 up and out. The way he's working the blue line, his stick on puck has gotten so much better. His gap has gotten so much better. He kills penalties. Quinn Hughes. Get this guy a beer, man. This guy is nasty. I think he might just have to give his old man Jim a beer. This guy's got good sperm, huh? Well, not just that. It's it, oh, he's got it, good sperm. That, but the education aspect and the motivation and the father figure, man. Like I'm a dad. It's it's impressive now. I'm you a, know when you I'm a dad. When your kids, like you're looking at these kids and you you're determined to let these kids, you know, chase their dream and find yeah. something they love to do. And these three kids loved hockey so much that he probably never had to get them out of bed. They probably wake up. Boom, at the rink, doing their thing, staying extra. Um, it's exciting things uh, for for the for our league to have three brothers like that that are, uh, you know, and I think even Luke is, what, second in rookie scoring yeah, right now as a D-man? Yeah. So these kids are studs, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching these kids play for a long, long time. Yeah, his dad's got super sperm. I'm going to say it here, he's got super <laughs> sperm. And then one last but not least, to get this guy a beer, JT Miller, a guy who we both love. 
listen, took a couple of dumb, dumb penalties. He plays with emotion, good and bad sometimes. I can relate to that. Um, talk sat him down. Last five minutes of the second period, sat him down. The Canucks weren't playing a very good structured game. Sat him down. JT Miller didn't say anything. Comes back in the third period, scores a goal, they win the game. Good on Rick Tockett. Yep. That's how you change the culture of a team. And good on JT Miller for not pouting, just getting out there, score a winner that got me my same game parlay. So I like that. But listen, I like this Canucks team. I love JT Miller. Get this guy a beer up. They're a great home team. I, I kind of studied their last uh, four or five home games, and they played Nashville hard. Like, they smothered him. Didn't give him a chance. Came back in the game, got up. El- Pedersen called what it is. Play great. Yeah, P- Pedersen's back on, mm-hmm. right? He's playing well. He's playing strong. He's He wants the puck. He's making making an effort. I, I like their team. It's good that Vancouver, under talks, is back to where they need to be. They got all beauty coaching staff. Talk, yeah. footer, Gonchar. How are you? A little bit of everything there. Which way you want a player? You can play any way you want. <laughs> so, uh, up his world. Party time. Excellent. Uh, ups. Take it, boy. Your boy, Paul Stasty. I know he means a lot to you. Paulie Nuts. Hangs him up. Congrats, fella. Um, I mean, c- call it what it is. This guy over 800 points, played in 1,200 games. Uh, I never won a Stanley Cup, which is why he probably chased it as, as long as he could, but tried. Um, you know, his old man, Pete Stassen, he's probably happy. Uh, his brother, um, his wife, got great kids. Uh, congrats to him on a great career. I, I enjoyed my time. You played with Stas a little bit. I enjoyed my time with him in uh, in St. Louis. Um, old Yoshi. Old Yoshi. He dressed up as Yoshi for a Halloween party one time. Made me laugh. <laughs> um, we uh, we had a great time. We had a great team. And now, uh, now we got to get him out to a couple of the Avs alumni events, I think. You know, yeah, no, stop. Part of the alumni. Now. We got a game December uh, 9th. December 9th. In Aspen, our boy Sheldon. Um, Sheldon Wolitski, the first annual winter NHL alumni classic. Baby. Yeah. We're going to touch on that more next week. We'll really dive into that. But yeah, that's going to be a great event. We're coming in. All the Avs alumni is coming in. Loops will be there. Uh, lots of guys. So we will get on that more. But it's December the 9th, right? 9th. Saturday, yeah, December 9th. Yeah, Stas, great. if you're listening, let's go. Stas, we need you on the Avs team because you're still probably in shape. You probably skated all summer. Yeah, Stas, we need you. Uh, I'll tell Johnny Michael Lyles to get in touch. I'm sure he already has. So, uh, But Stas, just for me, great career, buddy. Uh, good longevity, smart player, uh, and up dog. He made an impression. Great face-off, man. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So good for him. Up his world. Party time. Excellent. Uh, last but not least here before we get to Brady Kachuk, Draft Kings, baby. First of all, last night, Abs Blues. Listen, Abs came out. I texted you right away. I said, they're, they're, they're flat, and they were flat. Uh, shout out to Ross Colton, little little coming down the wing. I don't know who that D man was. Tucker, is that his name? Tucker. Tuck, uh, listen, get Bertuzzo in the lineup. Chief, no get him kid. in the lineup. No kid. What's that guy doing? Gets beat. Boom, big goal. Rantanen, short side, spink, spink. Abs find a way. I thought they played a great third period. I had him. Abs first period, puck line and money line. So thank you very much. And then Ducks Yotes. I needed the Yotes for a little four way parlay. Thought they played good at well at times. Up, Clayton Keller looked good. Logan Cooley looked good. They got a little stagnant late in the game God. when I had the ISO cam on the boys. It was only a matter of time. And wow, the Ducks are they playing well or what? This McTavish is clutch. I he came in late in the third and ripped one almost short side titty. And uh, I mean, it should have went in the net. I the Ducks are playing out of their minds, and wow, have they spun me around? <laughs> they spun. Me. Listen, I got to give Pat Verbeek some credit. Uh, obviously, bringing in Gudis, um, the other right-handed Russian defenseman, Lubukin, just big, solid, yeah, strong guys. The they got some young Russian guys that have stepped in and played well. Um, Leo Carlson, I, I I was like, I thought Fintelli was a sure second overall pick. Obviously, Pat Verbeek knows more than I do. Looks good. I love the number 91 on him. He looks big, smart. He's got three goals in six games. The only other duck to ever do that was a guy by the name of Paul Korea. Decent player. Not bad. Um, but, I mean, come on, man. I had a little 14-parlay going there, a four-leg parlay. What had a night? What had a night? Yeah. Troy Terry. Guy's got a release, man. Getsy. No hat trick. I got to be honest. I, I said to Getsy, I don't know about Troy Terry, right? I'll be honest. With you. I think he's a little soft, undersized. And Getsy said, no, oops. This kid can play. He battles, and he can shoot the puck. That's why Ryan Getzler should be a GM someday. Yeah. Because that is bang on. This kid's release. I know. Spink. No, he's good. He's shifty too. Like he's good in traffic. Uh, you know, when he gets the puck, you're kind of like, okay. I give still it a cross check. No, chance. because I, I've been kind of betting against him. So every time he touches the puck, I'm like, where, where's this going? 
and he keeps betting against him. He keeps it on his twig. He makes the right plays. He's a smart player, like you said. Yeah, smart player. Wish you wouldn't have done it to me last night. But anyway, so anytime you win on a night, you gotta be happy. The abs buzzing, buzzing. Bo Byram, what a pass by Nate McKinnon. Oh. Over to Bo Byram, a little backdoor spink, spink, bar down. How are you? Thought Binner played well. Another thing about Binner, I want to touch on you real quick. We're running out of time here, but um, seems calm, cool, and collective in the net right now. Like there was a couple plays in front of the net last night that if it was last year, yeah, he would have went Ogie Oglethorpe or Hammerhead style where he took the bucket off and he just kind of chilled. Yeah, 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 he's chilling. chilling. Kind of chilling. He's in the zone. First goal. I, I'm in the I, zone. I have the zone. I thought the first goal was, you know, the guy did beat, beat what's his name, why, but I think his I name's think Binner. Binner. Binner can get his blocker down on that. I don't know. I don't know. You want to see a little challenge, eh? Get out there. Get challenge. out there. Get that right foot. Like, block that low shot. Yeah. Panger called the game, too. Panger's got a good life, doesn't he? He's got a good life. I know he does. Uh, DraftKings, baby. Lock of the night. Saturday night, lock of the night. Up dog. You go first, fella. Lots of games to pick from. Give the fellas your lock of the night. Listen here. I'm going to keep this train going. I'm going Seattle cracking at home against the Flames, who are in dire need of a win. The Flames. I love cra- but I got the cracking at home. Listen, <laughs> Kubauer is only one in four, but expect him to be out. It's, yeah, I just, the cracking. Cracking. Start to smell like cow shit, Calgary. <laughs> Shit, stinky in Calgary. I uh, I, I got you the crack in at home, man. You I got the crack at home. Listen, they got back from a late trip out east. They got some rest. I expect Seattle to beat Calgary at home. Okay, I'm taking the Buffalo Sabers on Saturday night hockey night in Canada, going in and beating the Toronto Maple Leafs. Always play well there. Buffalo's humming. Tage Thompson had a sick goal against the Flyers last night. But you heard Wayne Gretzky talk last night about Buffalo Sabres. I said this to you last week on the pod or a week ago, two weeks ago. They got to learn how to play D. Even Gretzky's is like, hey, it's all fun yeah. games here, but the time now is to lock it down. But I do think this will be a track meet. So I'm going to say Buffalo Sabres and tickle the over. And maybe even tickle the first period over. But I'm going Sabres to beat the Leafs. Updog's got his cracking. And the night of the, the game of the night, um, Avalanche going into Vegas. Um, it's the mum's trip. For the Avs, oh, I love wow. my mother. I could not have made the NHL without my mother. Pam, I love you. Roxy, I love you. But I wouldn't have brought you to Vegas. On that. I would have said, no, 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 no mom's trip in Vegas. Let's bring them to Carolina and Columbus or something, all right? Yeah, give them a spa day in Carolina. Yeah, or where's another good place to bring the moms? Dallas, maybe? Not Dallas, fun city. Where do you bring the moms? You bring the, the moms to Arizona. Yeah, you know, there'd be a couple straggler moms just out at the tables just getting pinned. Yeah, I mean, listen. End up at the mail strip. Club. I wonder if some of the dads on Vegas are like, geez, the old lady's going to Vegas. Hey, that's not good. Oh, God, let's keep her away. She's, she's mad. i come back. She's mad I was at men's league till three in the morning with the boys <laughs> drinking. She's going to do something for sure out there. <laughs> All these years of not coming home. and now, <laughs> this She might a, not come home. And the avalanche are bringing her to Vegas for free. Oh, this is how she's going to get me back. But big marquee game. Gonna wa- I can't wait to watch that one. I might even try to go. I might text Tom Riley and Picky, see if they're going. But DraftKings, baby. Abs, Golden Knights is the game of the night. Updog's got his cracking. I'm taking the Sabres going in Toronto. Updog, you the man. Maxi, Hall Pass Media. We got Brady Kachuk coming at you right now. Bella. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Ah, uh, this guy's a dying breed, up dog, old school guy. I mean, you can't do one of the one of the boys without the other one. The whole family, know? the whole family, yeah. is great to us. But this guy could play in any, any era. His dad's era, our era, this era. <laughs> uh, Brady Kachuk, thank you so much for taking the time, buddy. Uh, nice little basement you got there. Looks like a good place to have a nap after Pracky. Oh yeah, after a couple camp days, definitely would come down here. But uh, yeah, nice little. I have to represent Matthew and. Uh, Big Walls jerseys down here. So when, I, when all the boys come over, they get to see that too. Yeah, that's awesome. Is that a basement that you've had a few of the boys over, like, you know, after game or, you know, a little Halloween party? It seems like a nice, uh, you know, you got to have a good basement in Canada, by the way. It's, like, it's the one thing you got to have. Yeah. No, there's been a couple of shakers here for sure. <laughs> uh, a little, little Christmas party. So there's there's been some good times there. Awesome. So Brady, thanks for taking the time, buddy. First of all, congratulations uh, on getting married in the off season. Uh, we had your bro on a, a couple days ago and obviously following you on social media. But first of all, it looked like you might have been having the most fun there, which I guess is, is the point when it's your wedding. But just talk about how great it was having all those, your family there, your USA hockey buddies. It looked like an absolute shaker. It was, it was awesome. It was, um, yeah, no, it started kind of with the Matthew setting up the bachelor party there in uh, South Florida. So it, Kind of start off the festivities there, which we had a blast at. And then, uh, yeah, just to, you know, of course, it's special for all those people to travel in and support, you know, such a special day for 
uh, my wife and I, and, and uh, yeah, we definitely had a great time. It was it was a great party, and I think there's some some hurting individuals the next morning. So that's uh, that's always a good sign to a good night. Hey, one thing I, I've noticed about you and I respect about you is, is you're not scared of the microphone to just start singing, and, and you, you sing with your soul, which I respect because I'm not going to say you're you're not you, you just sing with your soul like myself. So I respect that, brother. Yeah, I mean it's it's. You know, I got to get the people going. With it. <laughs> I need that, I need that extra jam in my life. So, um, yeah, when Mr. Brightson comes on, I got to. I feel like it's, it's, it's expected. Now everybody expects me to go up there and just rip the tarp off and everything like that. So just got to play the game a little bit. So. Brady, from a couple guys that, well, we're not married. We're both got girlfriends. Um, were, were you nervous at all? Like, is a wedding something you get nervous for? Like a, like a game seven match at all? Or were you just were you just fired up for it, like ready to rock and roll? I was just you now fired up. It was, uh, I think there's a lot of like dead times throughout the day where just looking forward to, you know, get to almost the ceremony, get a serious part out of the way, then just enjoying and having fun. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really think I got nervous, maybe towards, you know, kind of when everybody started trickling in and seeing everybody kind of arrive, that's when I got a little nervous. But um, now I was just looking forward to kind of getting the serious part over with, enjoy that special moment, but then just having a good time after. Hey, we asked Kevin Hayes this question. We asked your brother this question. As a couple of Canadian guys, and, and you know, we've got to know you and your family, and obviously you guys are a big part of USA Hockey, and at your wedding, all your boys were there. But just talk about how close you guys at USA Hockey are off the ice. We know there's going to be a World Cup coming up, the Olympics around the corner. It just seems like you boys, you don't have to force it, Brady. You boys just enjoy each other. I think that's so, so important. Yeah, it's just, you know... Uh, like you said, kind of, we've, we've all kind of feel like we come from like kind of the same background and, and just, you know, for us, we have a lot of connections when, you know, I played at the U.S. program, Matthew played at the U.S. program, then World Juniors just got to, you know, known us, we like to make friends with, you know, everybody we play with and, and get to know them and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, you know, kind of speaks volumes to the culture of USA hockey and how, um, you know, tight knit, you know, the groups usually are, um, when we're playing together. So, of course, hopefully that, that, that will translate into, hopefully an Olympics and a world cup and, and kind of show that team chemistry when that happens. Yeah. We often, we often look across at each yeah. other when we talk about the fucking Americans and Canada, we're like, they man, they're doing the, same. the Canadian boys better be fucking throwing weddings and getting these guys fired and singing and having fun. Uh-huh. That's how you win tournaments. I, I know. Yeah. I hear you, man. Yeah, well, you got You got us worried. You got us worried, Brady. We're, we're, <laughs> we're about to send a couple emails out to hockey Canada and say, let's get some more team building going here, boys. Let's get some. I agree. <laughs> Hey, uh, Brady, I couldn't have you on without you got his jersey behind you. And speaking of a nice couch, I'm sure Big Walt has put put his feet up there on that couch. But how, how's Big Walt doing? Uh, how how often does he get up? To, I know how much he gets to Florida, but how often does he get up to the old nation's capital? Yeah, he loves coming up here because it's like he comes to the rink and he'll muck it up with anybody at the rink. It's, he's talking to players, you know, our trainers, staff, or just – no, and his opinion is not needed at all. He still throws the you know. out <laughs> He's coming for like a week in uh, November. He usually comes up twice a year. So he's coming up for a good shift in uh, November and then hopefully um, you know, towards the end of the year where you know, things start getting serious here. Have you had to lean on your dad for uh, anything lately, like maybe throughout camp, like just this year, a fresh start? Is there anything like, you know, that you, you get home one day after practice and you're like, fuck, I got to ask the old man something. Like a- anything you've leaned on? On the big guy for? Yeah, I talk to him daily, um, just about different things. Just, um, you know, of course, just the everyday stuff of not how practice was. But, no, I think for this year especially, it's just kind of our first time, you know, in Ottawa having expectations and, and pressure going into the year. So um, I'm able to rel- rely on him heavily with uh, being able to deal with that and just kind of having somebody outside the, you know, the daily rank and, and – uh, kind of somebody that has a different perspective that's been there and done that, that is so helpful and useful for me to be able to use. Brady, I wanted to ask you about, you know, obviously we all know the, the, the run your brother had last year. And I, you know, I look at up dog as my brother, when he was in playoffs, I was watching him and having a good time. Now looking back and, and everything that Maddie went through, did, did you learn anything that could help you maybe when you get in that position as a playoff player, or was it just enjoying your big brother having success? It was more enjoying Matthew and, and all the success he was having and what he did for that team to to kind of put him in that position. But, I mean, I think it would be stupid for me not to try to learn from him and, you know, the day-to-days and, and no matter what happened that game before, it was always on to the next game and that focus and, and uh, 
just taking advantage of the opportunity. But yeah, no, his what he did, it, it kind of was my motivation throughout the whole summer is that that's something that I want to do and I want to provide to Ottawa and, and the city and and just kind of have you know the whole city rally around our team. And I think that's something that's driven me, especially this summer and, and something that I want to provide. Yeah, he just teed me up for my next question there. Uh, you know, you're going into your sixth season, fellow, which wow. which is crazy. Um, and you mentioned the off season. You know, from when you got in the league to this summer, have you changed your off season routines? Have you adapted? How how is it off season for for you now? Have you learned how you know what makes you feel good, what you need to push, or, or, or talk our listeners through that? Yeah, I've definitely. You know, it's crazy when you say a six year. It, it still feels like I'm going into like a year two or three yeah. right now, and um, it's flying by. But yeah, no, I've definitely altered you no know, trained um i don't lift heavy anymore uh, i'm just trying to kind of get faster stronger more powerful but without putting that kind of stress on um you know with the heavy weights on the back and different stuff like that but uh yeah we added a nice little you know turf uh turf workouts to our regiment and and math and i have been doing pilates and, and different stuff like that and actually what i think has helped me a lot too with conditioning that Instead of hopping on the bike, I like to do a little boxing um, once a week. So that's, I feel like it's fun to, you know, especially for the long summers to kind of release your energy and anger out on, on the bag and stuff like that. So um, it's definitely altered from when I started and, and uh, it's probably going to keep altering just to make sure I keep improving. Oh, I'll tell you what, it, it wasn't a pretty picture, but I did Pilates with my girlfriend about two months ago, right? I was like, she's like, let's go do Pilates. I said, okay, I, I could hardly fit in the fucking machine, Brady. But do it, do it, do it. The exercises, though, bro. I, I mean, like, it works every muscle for a hockey player. Like, after I got done it, I was like, especially near the end of my career, I'm like, I should have been doing more of this because I remember Jared Stoll told me he was the first one to say I'm doing Pilates, but it hits, it hits every muscle, eh, for, for a hockey player? Oh, yeah, like the core, the groins, like everything, like every, exactly what you said, the hips. It's, it's exactly what we need for hockey players. It, like, stretches it, but it strengthens you in those positions, too. And I think that's kind of been a game changer for, um, no kind of health throughout the year. Just be able to have that foundation that you did all summer. It just keeps you. Um, no, it's more injury prevention, and I think that's a big reason why we train is is to train not to get hurt and, and try to play full eighty two games. We we got a Pilates place across the street. It's called Trim, <laughs> and I'm t- it, it, but they got the mega reformers, which are big boys. What like you those? fit. They're just a bigger reformer that you can kind of do more look more of like a stand-up work i need the big boy you would love this i need it for not just the trend not just the trim but it's like it's badass like you're in there and you're kind of like yeah you know it's like your tool that you have you know it's not so much like yoga which i've tried to bring you in for but yeah it's you know the mega i'm a swimmer brady have you ever tried swimming buddy i started swimming when i retired and it actually changed my life no joke i mean you're a little young for it now but uh, swimming to me has been unbelievable yeah, I'm a tough swimmer. I, I'm not even <laughs> a strong. Swimmer. Well, look at the size of your bottom half. That's why. <laughs> it's it's survival mode out there. I can't tread water. Can't do nothing. So I I, I just like to stay when I go on the ocean around the knees. <laughs> hey Brady, last year like you played 82 matches, brother. The way you play, the, the way you play, it's it's impressive, right? So, do, well, how do you take pride in in you know showing up every day, playing that face first style of hockey, sticking up for your teammates? You know, and playing all 82 games, like so some days, you know, I, I know what it's like getting up, but, you know, the the pride of being that guy in your room every day, well, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I definitely had a little bit of a, you know, taste of it this preseason where I had to miss a couple of games. It just, I don't know, you just kind of feel like you're not left out, but you just want to be in the battle every day. That's what, you no, know, we do what we do is just to be there with, you know, your teammates and just, you know, give it your all. And I feel like that's, such a satisfying feeling after, you know, big wins when everybody left it all out there. And, you know, you guys know that you never want to you know, miss that and, and not be a part of that. So, you know, for me, it, it's, you know, of course there's going to be bang, bangs up and, and you know, be banged up throughout the year, bruises, but just, just want to put, you know, the body on the line just for the guy next to it. Cause you know, at the end of the day, that, that reward you get at the end of the year, that's um, something that we all want. And, uh, you know, knowing that you put everything into it, it would be that much more rewarding. And the beer's a little bit colder when you, yeah, after you yeah. fucking block a couple, eh? maybe no <laughs> big hits, you're like, ah, it's a good win, boys. That one feels good. But um, Brady, I've got to know you, you know, as a person through your family and your brother and stuff. And this is a personal question for me. I love the way you play, obviously. But when it comes to a leader, you got that C in your chest. I, I know what you do on the ice. How do you try to lead every day? I mean, I, I was a raw, raw guy coming there. Most of these guys were probably like, 
shut up, Bob. He's like, how, how do you like to lead, Brady? What, what is your, are you a rah-rah or just on the ice type of guy? I like to, and that's tough because I definitely, I'm a pretty vocal guy, emotional. Um, but I just try to lead by the work ethic and interest. Um, trying to show that, no, I'm trying to give it my all, I'm trying to put, you know, the blood, sweat and tears into it. And, and, uh, I don't know. Just try to read the room when, um, and read the situation where we need a big hit. We need a little energy. Then, um, that's my time to step in and try to create that. So, um, I'm very lucky to have you now a great leadership group in Ottawa that I'm able to rely on, and and that you know each guy brings something different to the table. Whether it's you now the rah rah, um, the vocal, the leading by example. I think that no matter if it's you know your first year or you've been in the league for 15 years, somebody can. Um, lead in a different type of way. So I think that's what we have in, in Ottawa, and that's what makes our group so special is that no matter who you are, you can bring something to the table and, and help the team win. I like what you said there about reading the room. Uh, I think some of the best leaders that I ever had, like Scott Niedemeyer, for example, Norm would not say a whole lot, but then when something needed to be said, he would say it. And then I always make fun of Daniel Winnick. Daniel Winnick would be the guy, you, you lay an egg in the first period, and he comes in, he's like, we got to be fucking better, boys. Yeah, you're like, shut up, Winnie. Just take your jersey off. We, we know we got to shot 18-3, to three, so... I think for you, reading the room is is a great observation. I think that's the best way to lead, Brady. You just get a read on what the boys are feeling and adjust with it. Yeah, it's it's, it's the game, the situation, who we're playing, and, and just the emotion of the game. I think that's what I'm starting to learn and, and just trying to you know make a conscious effort of um, trying to be aware of that, be aware of you know watching individuals and the, how they're playing and, and different stuff like that, but... Um, yeah, there's definitely not many eight minute guys uh, talking right before the coach comes in. Hey, boys, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I realized laugh. We tried to do that as a joke. I think it's the funniest thing. Yeah. You'd have to uh, find. You'd have to find me at the eight minute mark. Yeah, I even I'll be there. on his. I'll be on his phone. <laughs> I, I know those guys I play with. Though. They know when the coach is coming. In. Hey, boys, come on, boys. Let's get going. Right? <laughs> come on, now follow the game plan here, hey. <laughs> Brady, Daka, uh, I don't know if Obi had this teed up, but I wanted to ask you about your line. I, I look at your line, and you got to be excited going to the rink every day, playing with guys like Stutzel and and a guy that's got his youth back, Claude Giroux, who I played with in Philly. But you know, I look at that line and just the creativity you got there. You got the size, you got the experience with Claude, you got the youth with with Tim. Like, talk about just that that feeling, and and you know, just having, I guess, the leash to do what you guys do best. And that's probably just go out, play hockey and, and put points up. Yeah. It's, um, it's been a lot of fun. That's for sure. Be able to, like you said, we've kind of all three played different, you know, way from each other. And, and, but we all three kind of gelled at the same time and, and we make all of each other better. And, and, um, yeah, it's, it's nice that we're all different too. It's just, we all have our different characteristics and, and, uh, but it's been a blast. It's, um, I think, you know, as Timmy and I are learning and, and kind of getting older is, is we have to play that, you know, 200-foot style hockey. And, and if we're going to be playing against some of the top guys, we need to, you know, limit their chances. So I think we're learning that and and kind of putting a focus in that. And, and G's been so helpful when it comes to that and, and all the time, all, all the years and, and hours he's put into it that, you know, he's learned how to play the right way. So it's just he's a perfect person to learn from and. And uh, it's good comedy on the bench too at times. So it gets fired and we get some after you matches going, but it's uh, it's awesome. Brady, we're, we're getting you right after training camp here. And, and you know, obviously the last couple of years, you guys have gotten not off to the start you wanted to and found your game as the season went on. Was there anything different you guys did in camp from a leadership perspective, from a, maybe a coach's perspective or, or getting there a little bit early? Like just talk me through training camp this year and, and your guys, I guess, expectations coming out or how you're going to get off to a good start. There's almost everybody in around Labor Day before camp even got in, so I, I knew right when we got there, I'm like, okay, this is this is business now, and and you know the guys are ready and itching to get back, and um, that was just I mean, the only thing I, I think we did different because you know our 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 camps are hard, they're a lot of skating, a lot of conditioning, and I just think you no, know, it's just the communication conversation. I think you know guys that have been there. Now, from the start of the rebuild and, and kind of been added along the way is that um, that'll just almost a conversation to how we're all in the same mindset now. And just, you know, fortunate that we got, you know, the contracts that we did, you know, long-term deals that we'll be able to be, you know, playing together for the next bunch of years. So it's just that next stage in this whole 
no process is is doing what we want to do and and that's you know going into every game and being confident that you know we're a tough team to handle with you know the way we play and and that we're going to be a tough team to handle for a bunch of years so i think that was the one thing that we changed and uh, i won't say changed but you no know, kind of made it you no know, communication amongst each other that you know we have expectations for ourselves and and what we want to do this year yeah brady you kind of teed me up because like you said you guys all got rewarded with long-term deals and you know, as ex-players, we want guys to make as much money as they can, and all you guys deserve it up there. And I was always that guy in a one-year deal or, or, or this. So I was, but, but what's it like to come in there? The, the management believes in you. The GM believes you. And then at the end of the day, you boys probably look around and say, boys, we got to earn this contract as well, right? But it's got to feel good to know that they want all you guys together. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely makes us very fortunate that um, now that we're going to be together and that, they, like you said, they believe in – the group that we have that you know each year to give ourselves a chance to do what we want to do and, and accomplish the goals that we want to. And, and, um, you know, it definitely makes it no more rewarding that the rebuild we you know, for me personally, I was there right from the start and the amount of guys that you now have come and gone were, were tough and a lot of them were my tight buddies. So, um, just to see that kind of happen and, and, at a young age, being able to learn and, and kind of adapt to that. And then all of a sudden now that, I know that there's going to be 10 guys there the next year and for the next three, four years that we'll all be together and grow together is something that's definitely new to me, but um, really fortunate, really excited with the group we have and just not how you know, good players are part of this team, but just great people and, and how much fun we have you know, at the rank and away from the rank as well. Chucky, uh, I'm looking at your St. Louis Blues jersey behind you there. This July, you guys brought in uh, one of the highest scoring Blues of all time to your club, Vladimir Tarasenko, a guy I played with, uh, a, a guy that can just, you know, he can score at will. Um, he's got a fierce factor to him, right? Like he, he's a competitor, he, he competes. Your thoughts on, you know, what a guy like that can mean to your club, like a guy that can score goals late in games, you just find a way to put the puck on a stick, but... You know, and, and then just, I guess, your experience with Vladdy in the room, getting him to know the guys, getting him to know the city. What's the whole experience been like with, with my boy Vladdy? Yeah, Vladdy's been great. He's, um, you know, he's, he's already a big part of our room. Um, not just as the player he is, but, you know, the office, the leadership, and, and his Stanley Cup experience that, you know, he's able to bring to our team. It's, um, no, he's been great. We had a little team bonding, and, and uh, no, he kind of, gave us you know a true heartfelt kind of thing about what happens when you, know, you win the Stanley Cup and I think guys who have grown up watching him you know got the NHL when he was on the cover just for was able to hear kind of first thing from him it kind of opened up a lot of you know guys eyes were like holy cow like this is like the honesty that you now that came almost right from the heart I think that just stuff like that I think brings a team closer together and and uh now, of course, we're really excited about the addition of him, not only on the ice and, and what he can do that um, can change a game in a heartbeat, but also off the ice in the culture and, and uh, <laughs> the leadership and experience that he brings as well. The fr I, I played against Vladdy a little bit, but the first thing I got to meet him at the All-Star game this year when you were down in South Florida with, with Matty, and the first thing I thought was how thick he was. Is that when you, when you first saw him in his street clothes or his gitch, Brady? Like how thick his legs and ass are. I'm like, this guy's a fucking bull. A unit. Yeah, he was a unit, but he's, he's just strong as an all. I was like, holy cow. We, like we're doing tests and I'm like grinding on the dumbbell press. All of a sudden he grabs it and does like 10 more reps than me. I was like, Jesus, man. I'm shredded. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's, he's so powerful, yeah, but like it's, it's it. crazy the way he shoots the puck, right? Like we're watching this young Connor Bedard come in now with a new like style of shooting, but when Vlad, when I first started to see Vladdy shoot it, it's like he shoots it off the toe of his stick, which is he doesn't really have a big curve either, and it just like pops. It's like it just pops, and the stick is flimsy, and his forearms are as thick as your quads, and yeah. you're like, what the fuck? It's crazy. His legs, man. So. Yeah, like we were doing shooting the other day, just before practice, and I was kind of just picking his brain, and I saw he was kind of coming on his strong side, like power play, just ripping shots, and like, hey, like, what are you like trying to do? And then he started explaining to me, like, the dot. He's like, goalies now. Like, he started thinking, like, in a goalie perspective. Like, goalies, when I'm in this position, are just starting to get to the post. So that means I've got far side, or even now with the the technique the uh, goalies are starting to do when they go on, like, their 
like the one pad up on the post, the other pad flat. It's like you have a little spot, low blocker that you're able to just kind of squeeze one. Like I've never thought of that in my life. <laughs> like I'm looking just to go bump here. Yeah, like, yeah. I just hit the net. <laughs> and you're thinking about that. Yeah. And I was like, I took that and I started thinking about it. I'm like, wow, that's pretty impressive that he's thinking about it that way. You're just thinking about just ripping that water bottle. Hey, just top cheese, wow. knock the water bottle, water bottle off. I'm starting to think about my celly. I just <laughs> trying to figure out what I want to do. Hey, Brady, are, are the boys still playing a good, good old game of rebound after practice? It's one of my favorite things to do. Are the boys still playing like, snapping the rebound around? You know what? I got to say, like, we, our practices are so tough. So that is just kind of chaos after everybody's, you know, for me, I do my usual tips. Yeah. And I'm smart. After after that, I'm like, all right, guys, I'm done. Like, I'll, I'll see you in the room. We'll watch Entourage in the room. We'll talk. Guys, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if there's much like rebound anymore. Guys are just kind of doing own thing. Guys stay out forever, just ripping pucks. But um, yeah, that that is that was those are the good days when we were playing that. But yeah, we haven't been doing that as much. It's so funny. Well, he just went up my book even more. Uh, I'm watching Entourage after practice. I love you even more now. God, fuck, he's watching Entourage <laughs> after practice. Brady, yeah, that that's, is that's great. a G thing. Uh, that's a G thing. He's it. been putting it on. For Brady, us. it's so it's so great that you just. You know, you mentioned tipping after yeah, practice. I so watched smart, I, I watched your old man do that forever. Like be, being a visiting guy coming in and, you know, whether I'm in St. Louis or with Phoenix, but back in the day, but I, I'd get there and I'd come on the bench and I'd, you know, look across and McKinnis and all these guys and I'd sit and your old man was just like, he was a pro at it. And he was fucking, it was good luck moving big Walt in front of the net, but what an art form and something that, you know, now you and Maddie in front of that net, it's like, that's your spot, man. You guys get there and it's hard to move you, and that's where all the goals are. No, it doesn't that hasn't changed since the history of hockey oh. started? The goals are scored right in front of that blue paint, and that's what you know, he kind of preached from us for a young age. Is you know, the crease is the last place the pucks got to go to go yeah. get in the mat, you just got to be there, get a stick on it. And yeah, he he you no know, told us that he worked on it, you know, almost daily. So I was like, all right, I want to do that as well. So, you no, know, our deer not always out there shooting, so just try to get. Get out there, do you no, know, however many pucks a day, and just I don't know. I feel like it's always good just to kind of wake up in the morning and and just kind of prepare for the night in that aspect. But and also too, with the rules now with the cross checking in front, you're not really getting as you know abused like we did you know a couple of years ago before they kind of implemented the the cross check and things. So um, yeah, no, it's and of course you no, know, we're able to you know use our frame to our advantage against you know some D and and. Uh, no, that's a it's fun, you know, getting to the front and battle and yeah. trying to get three C ones. I mean, that's that's those are I feel like those those are the most rewarding goals. I I think that you know you're grinding front, just get a little stick on it or rebound. It's uh, um, step rewarding. That's for sure. Get a little stick. I got a piece of that, boys. I got a piece. Of, <laughs> oh, hey, I'll yeah, tell you what. Hey, yeah, I, I saw your segment off the pants. Hey, off oh, the pants. I hit my pants, boys. I hit my pants. <laughs> I used to go Brady. I used to go after practice uh, or morning skates. I'd go tip pucks in front of that. A, because that was when Bufflin was going, I'm like, hey, they're putting their fattest guy in front of the net. Maybe I'll get on the power play here. But, but it helped my hand-eye. And her golf game, yeah. Yeah, it helped me for tracking pucks when I had to block it, but it helped my hand-eye. And I would tell young kids all the time in the end of my career, fucking go and tip pucks. Tip puck. Like, when you look at Pavelski, you kidding me, Brady? Like, that guy is a machine. Yeah. And I think now, too, like, now you start thinking about the game itself and where it's going. Like, everybody's skilled now. It's like everybody has that skill and and but there's realistically not that many spots for just to be a skilled player in the NHL but you have to have that extra piece to your game whether it's um you know like guys like Pavelski he's got as much skill as anybody but he just has added that extra dimension to his game that makes him such a threat even to even now so it's it's I feel like it's for kids now it's it's not just all about skill like you gotta now either have you know that physical game or add you know different elements to your game like tipping pucks. I feel like that can keep you now around for a while and, and kind of implement yourself to be a, a pretty good player by tipping pucks. Hundred percent, Brady. I wanted to ask you about one of your D man, Sanderson. Got, you got a nice ticket here in the off season. And, and I, when you play against guys and then you play on their team and you see them every day, you you really appreciate what they can do. And I don't get to watch them as much as as I, I would like to. So for for a guy who's been with them and you see him every day. What's the impressive thing about him, and what made you know your GM want to lock him into that long term deal right away? I'll personally say this: I'm excited for you guys to be able to watch him more with that you no know, closer look. I think 
Now, I, I said this you know, earlier um, in the summer. I think he's the most underrated player in the NHL. Um, I know everybody always looks as, you know, 77 games. How does he make, you know, 8 million? I think if they watch him closely, it's just the little things he does. It's it's so hard to describe just how good he is defensively. His stick, his skating is some of the best I've ever seen. And he's just, and off ice, of course, nobody really knows. He's just an unbelievable guy. He's just such a good teammate. Artie will do anything for you. Um, it might be a second year, but the way he kind of has aura around him, and of course his dad played, so he has that kind of NHL background of how to treat people, staff like that. And, and you know, for me, I, it's, I already look up to him and his work ethic. He's, even last night, um, you know, he got in late and he's at the rank skate with the injured guys in the morning working on his shot and, and doing different things like that. So I'm, I'm definitely, no, he works so hard that, you know, use that for motivation to, you know, try to work him. And that's the great thing about our team is the internal battle of you know, trying to out-compete each other and push each other to be the best. That's awesome. Uh, I got to ask you, I grew up watching the Battle of Ontario, and you are a fucking perfect person for the Battle of Ontario. Um, well, what's it like playing in that? I always grew up being like, I'm not going to lie, I would have been, a, I was grew up a Leafs fan, but watching the Leafs and Sens back in the day and watching you guys now, like, those games aren't hard to get up for, and I always seem that you play your best in that Battle of Ontario. It's definitely going to be a lot more exciting, um, you know, now than it probably was uh, the last couple of years, just because the difference of where our teams were at and you know how we were rebuilding, and, and I wouldn't say it was a slapping, but uh, we just weren't as even, you no know, field, and, and but now as you know, our teams you know coming up and, and trying to knock on the door on some of these teams in the Atlantic that. I feel like they're going to get way more competitive. You no, know, I think the fan bases are going to get way more into it. And just the, the whole province of Ontario, I think, is going to really enjoy these battles for the next bunch of years. Yeah, I guess I was asking about the atmosphere, right? Like, I, I know there's probably too many Leafs fans in your building when they come to town, but like the atmosphere when you guys play in those games, it, it's 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 going to get more electric, but it's still electric even from the get go, wasn't it? Oh, uh, it's, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's you know, I think there's a little too much blue in our rink when yeah. they play at home, but uh, I think that will change with, you know, our team's success and, and uh, uh, moving forward. But, yeah, I mean, there, it's tough not to get up for games like that, games against Montreal. You know, those those rivalries are kind of bigger than our teams. It's, it's the communities are involved and the fan bases are um, care more about that than, um, you know, of course, any other games. So it's... Uh, not just want to you know win the game, but you want to make the community proud as well. Last one for me, Brady. Like you guys are heading in the right direction, and everything you've said in this interview. If I'm a Sens fan, I'm fired up that you guys got the right people at dressing room. But do you guys get a taste of of how good of an organization the Senators have been? You know, when me and Updog were in the league, they were going to Stanley Cup Finals. They were always good. Do you guys know that that you know there is a rich tradition there? Can you feel it in the dressing room? Can you feel it in the community? Because the Sens for a long time, and you guys are going to get back there. We're, we're a good, solid hockey club. I think tradition's not the best word. And you now, like you said, we have you know, pictures of the wall on our wall, of, you know, t old team photos. Now in our room, we have you no know, significant players that have played you know, throughout uh, our time here and, and the time the organization's you know, been around. And um, yeah, and, and more guys are around the rank, um, you know, like Chris Phelps, Chris Neal, uh, Wade Redden, Alfredson's been around more. So, and Always, you know, guys like that who've done so much for the team and for the city. It's you always want to acknowledge, you know, the guys that have put the blood, sweat, and tears into making this organization to what it is. So it's it's always great that you know the great tradition that we have. We want to keep, um, you know, adds to it and just um, and to you know what they started and trying to make it, you know, better for the time we leave for the next group. So um, yeah, no, it, it's been great to have those guys around, and be able to. You know, for them to tell stories and, and just being able to listen to them and learn from them, it's, it's such a great thing that we have in Ottawa. Well, buddy, they, in, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinion, they got the right captain, buddy. Uh, you know, we're so proud of you here, Mr. Curfew. You're always great to us. We appreciate you taking the time. Your whole family's been great to us. Um, yes, how's Batherson doing? I heard he's, I, I got some swag coming for you and Batherson. I, I, I fired uh, him a DM and said, I got a couple wait. of t-shirts coming for you, yeah. fella. Uh, we both can't wait. We can't wait for, uh, uh, when we get to see you in Cali, here we've been talking about. It. We were talking about Halifax, and uh, we're counting down the days. So we can't wait. And thank you for that. Hey, buddy, thank you for everything you do for Mr. Curfew. Stay healthy, play your game, and enjoy every second of it, Brady. We appreciate it, fella. Yeah, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me, and uh, we'll see you soon.